Welcome everyone and have a good day. Sound is Pursue is a new generation of classical music competition, which offers contestants to perform in live broadcasts from their own locations anywhere in the world. Sound is Pursue, a panel of judges, represents top performing artists and music educators from around the globe. Sound is Pursue offers an unprecedented array of awards for musicians. Welcome to our podcast, Meet the Judges, music promoters and managers, and music educators. No matter where you are or who you are, music connects us all. We started with a dream, but now we are paving the future. Welcome to the Sound is Perceiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection, community, an extraordinary array of judges get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage. Today for our program, we welcome back Irma de Jong and Jan Ricardo here. Irma, welcome. Jan, Ricardo, welcome. Um, these are managers of iClassical Academy, a company which is offering prizes to our winning contestants of the Sound is Pursue competition. And we're so happy to have you back. I'm so glad you kept your promise and uh, came back for more questions because last time we barely ran through a few of them and our podcast was very long. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for those of our viewers who missed our first podcast with uh, Irma and John Ricardo, um, Irma and John Ricardo are creators of the company, which is one of the leaders in the industry of online classical music and education. The iClassical Academy offers an incredible curriculum, comprehensive curriculum for online learning. You have been spearheading the industry of online learning for years now. And of course, now with the current changes, many musicians and managers and educators want to learn from your expertise and your experience. Um, if you would, wouldn't mind, please, uh, refreshing for our viewers real quick, what makes your company and its philosophy behind your decisions of how you run the company so viable and so successful? Um, maybe I can answer that question, Anna. Please. First of all, thank yeah. you very much for hosting us again. We're really very happy to be here and thank to you. be able to, to talk about iClassical Academy, which, as you say, yes, it's a, it's a great academy. Maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'm really very proud of it. Oh, and yes, you, you have <laughs> a lot to be proud of. It's an incredible collection of very, very um, useful and helpful information and very accessible to everyone. Exactly. Great. So it was really our aim to present a large, a large uh, catalog of master classes of different master teachers from from renowned institutions worldwide and also to we started at a certain point to offer courses and adding more uh, material to this academy we always were very keen to have it in high definition to have the master classes shoot in a very special way that it makes it online learning attractive and this was uh, the aim when when we started uh, building our academy, so always first quality, then a lot of vi variety, so people have a choice to also listen and find different schools. Uh, people that come from the Russian school, the French school, uh, the Italian school, the, you know, we have so many different kind of uh, visions and, and teaching techniques, and we found it very important that it's accessible to a large audience. and. Um, worldwide so not you know exclusive for some part of of musicians but for everybody and not only the students in higher education but also professionals that maybe are already in in orchestras playing or they have different kind of careers but they still feel like you know 
keep on learning because it's a learning process that never ends. And that was also very important for us. Plus, for example, uh, amateur musicians that are sometimes playing at a high level or even if they don't play at high levels, they can also find um, material that we started to create two years ago for, for beginner and intermediate. So we have a lot for everybody's taste. I have to say that it's more focused on higher education and um, but we're also building uh, different categories. You had been ahead of many um, educational institutions and ahead of many musicians and promoters for for years. Now, uh, with the current situation as it is right now, uh, and with while well, the music performing and educational world, I. I want to say is scrambling to establish online presence and online offerings even. Um, your company is once again moving on to the next logical step. I mean, if uh, we had a comprehensive curriculum already built in the um, pre-recorded video format, that's the very logical step to offer this curriculum, um, which you accumulated over many years by now, as a, a one entry point for anyone and everyone to uh, basically walk into your academy um, and choose what they want to learn today and choose what they want to learn tomorrow. So my understanding that um, you're launching a whole new system of uh, subscription-based attendance. To me, it just seems like you're offering people to enroll in the academy, just like it would be in a traditional uh, physical space, uh, just apply for Juilliard or something like that. Um, can you please explain to us how that concept works? I think that, uh, well, I can say something about it and John Ricardo, he can maybe add something more. Um, of course, since we are um, online working and we follow all these developments all the time, we're also able to react quickly. And I think that's one of our strengths. I mean, we're not in a conservatory where you have to go through the board and through meetings and this person has to agree and that person has to agree. So we can act more quickly and we think that's also one of the strengths of our academy. So for us, in the time where we live, but we are working on this already for a couple of years, we always found it from the beginning very important that a musician learns to be also a, a musical entrepreneur. Because you cannot just learn your instrument and thinking that now you're done and people are waiting for you and you can go on the stage. No, we have a lot of concurrency in, in, this, uh, in this métier. We have a lot of people who are playing very good. Um, so it's not, it's not enough that you master your instrument, the technique, knowledge about music theory, composition, all these things. You also need to have some, call it soft skills, but I don't want to call it soft skills. You also need to have skills like how to manage yourself, how to manage your, your business. Because it will be a business, whatever you do, if you want to teach and if you want to perform, if you want to teach online, private, uh, private lessons. Um, I think that's, that's a, a feature for musicians that in the beginning when they start to study, they're not so much aware of it. They're not aware that they are very versatile in a way because lots of musicians, they do many, many different things. And they, they have many different hats. They are a composer, they are a musician, they are a teacher, they are a performer. Um, you know, sometimes they're coaching. So it's, it's really very versatile. And that's why we thought we also want to be in this way. We want to offer many different fields of study that completes you as a musician. So we call it the 360 musician because we think it's important that you have this all-round vision of what you need to know about, what is important for you to, to establish a good career. Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful name, 360 Musician, and it's a, it's a concept which, when I went to school, was um, not even present. We were focused, of course, on the academic study and academic subjects and 
practicing our instrument. And um, it was um, a common misconception, I want to say, that uh, musicians just need to learn their skill and wait for someone to come in and do the rest for them. It never was true in my career and in many of my colleagues. Um, some complain about it, but some embrace it, um, that we are doing our own business and self-management, even if we have jobs, self-management is still a prevalent form of uh, directing our careers. Um, so you're offering now this subscription. T tell us a little bit more in the, in the detail how the, that well, is set up. Yes, yes. So the, this, this concept of what we are offering now, actually, uh, uh, we started to think about this already one year and a half ago when we discovered for, for the first time that our Bach <clears throat> violin course by Miriam Fried was bought by a cellist. So we realized that some cellists were buying a violin course. And this testified to us for the first time that our users were possibly not only focused on their instrument, but they would be uh, likely interested to different subjects. And going on with this kind of, uh, you know, developing this kind of concept and also following through the statistics, the, the changing of habits and of needs from the online audience. We can now came to the conclusion that uh, we, we better offer to, to a potential customer or to the actual customers uh, the way to access to everything. Because if you have to choose to buy one single course at a time, and uh, then, you, then you start thinking, you know, should I spend this $50 or not? Is it exactly what I need? Or am I losing not the money because it's not that important, but maybe I'm losing time and I'm not focusing on the right subject and in the right uh, way. Now, we like to have our audience as members of the academy, as we call it. And so if you are a member, it's right that it's fair that you can access to everything the academy is doing. And this gives to the audience the opportunity to have a look at, at what, what is the content of the courses. Even if you maybe you previously don't think you know the concept is you don't have to think uh, previously to exactly what you need and then choose a course because this could also cause some confusion it's still possible of course you just need one course you buy that one and that's all and then you buy another right. one in time this is still possible but uh, what we are focusing on is to offering the possibility to, to, to be a member and as a member you access to everything the the academy offers and so you know, you have a course, maybe you didn't even think of it before, exactly. but since you have it, you can go and access to that and have a look what it is about and then decide if you need. But you already have it. It's mm -hmm. it's it's really uh, turning the concept upside down, you know, and this we believe will be the tendency and the best way to benefit of online education in the future. I, I can't agree more because your academy is offering courses in some areas with which musicians are simply not familiar exactly. or have not experienced. And um, they may have a question about uh, how to build their presence in the yeah. social media, for example. Yeah. And knowing the reputation of our classical academy of providing the highest quality of educational material, they can just uh, look up that course and maybe you know quickly click around what is this about how do how do they explain how it's done and um that way they don't have to search for me this is a solution in two twofold i don't have to search for a recommendation which information is going to be given to me and it's going to actually provide me with helpful stuff and two if i want to look more in depth I know that i have um a built course which will take me through from a to z Exactly. And will explain to me in progressive steps instead of yeah. dumping the information from the middle or from the end of the process on an unprepared viewer. I think this is excellent. As a that musician, exactly. I really would like the more tools like that. Yeah. And um, we would like to show a few examples.
Um, the first example is from the course prepared for iClassical Academy by Gian Maria Grillo. Yeah. And um, let's see, I would like a few comments after that. There's no orchestra in the world, whether it's a community orchestra, whether it's a band, whether it's a professional orchestra, whether it's a student orchestra, it doesn't matter. No orchestra in the world needs a beat. What they need is a pulse. The pulse is how you start the orchestra, how you give an upbeat, how you keep the motor running, how you change a pace. And the point of origin of the pulse is the rest. Practicing students are often taught that the primary attention should be on the right hand because that's the one that's beating time. And the left hand should be left for expression. This type of approach doesn't really offer a practical solution to what to do with the left hand. We can use the left hand for cueing players or sections. We can use the left hand to highlight, enhance a solo part. We can use the left hand for dynamics like crescendo and diminuendo, for instance. Or we can use the left hand for a particular change of atmosphere, color, energy, or anything else. Let's take in this. Tchaikovsky, his symphony uh, number six, part of the first movement. Now, we've seen the flute has a line that goes up and needs a pulse on the second, between the first and second beat, in order to get out of the slur. So, pim un tirarim pariram param pim pariram. We follow the line up, pulsing on beat two. Pim two. Tariram tararim tararim tariram. What happens one bar after that? Well, the bassoon comes in. So. How about we answer the left hand to the left hand with the right hand and alternate the same type of movement exactly as the music shows. See, you're going to have this type of movement going up and down, which is exactly what is in the movie. This is so helpful. Uh, I, I'm not a conductor, I'm a pianist, but uh, the uh, score analysis in this course is so helpful to any instrument which, um, you know, any instrumentalist who attempts to approach polyphonic texture in any piece. He's talking about how to address the pulse and voicing in the polyphony, basically. That, that, that's, exactly, that's exactly what we mean when we talk about the 360 musician. This course, which is basically a very synthetic very clear very well done let's say video manual or all that you can do with the baton in your hand including right and left hand as he said but so it's very useful for a conductor is very useful for a, a, a musician who wants to be a conductor in the future but it's very useful for a normal musician because through this and having a look at this course in the end uh, it just take, let, let's say you're a pianist, you're a violin, you can, you can anyway have a look at this course and learn how to expect from a, from a conductor and how to, you know, to be more merged in with the playing or your group, your band, your orchestra, ensemble, whatever it is, and how to dialogue with the conductor. This is a problem that many students, they have, because they are all wondering, probably, or many of them are wondering, okay, sooner or later I will play in an orchestra, and then what do, they, what do I do? How do I follow the... You know? The conductor's and, gesture, uh, the, yeah, the conductor's needs, to gesture, be, you know. needs to be understood. And no matter how clear the conductor presents his gesture, it's still exactly. a language which others who watch need to learn too. Right. And I, 
And what I think is also interesting about it is that if you, let's say, in the, the old system that we used first uh, until today where we launched our new plans, if you see this course pass the baton, you will think, oh, that's not really for me. I'm, maybe I'm a cellist. I, I, you know, let's go what is there for me. However, if you now come to our plans, and you have access to all, you start to be more curious already because, you know, it's like when you go to an all-you-can-eat restaurant, very difficult to choose what you want to eat, right? Because it all looks very appealing. And I well, think it's a little bit the same effect. So you see all these courses and rich material and you think, oh, wow, maybe, you know, I can also grab a little bit out of this one, this course, because it as Jean Ricardo already said in yourself, uh, you're, you also, Anna, it's very useful. It's even, I find it even interesting for a music lover, somebody in the audience. Exactly. If they would watch this, they would understand much better what, what is a conductor doing? Why is he doing like this? Why he makes this movement? I find it a rich material for, for many, many people. Absolutely. Um, let's watch a little bit of uh, one more course offered, um, recorded for iClassical Academy by Georgie Park. And a few comments after that. Good. Zavlos. Papam, papam, papam. You know, before a forzato, it's very important that we should lift the bow. Otherwise, you can't play the first forzato. Very rich because this, all these groups. Good. is a completely different experience. That is almost like being thrown into the process of an in-person uh, lesson. This is this is makes me smile when I watch it back to the, to this to this mar, um, masterclass because when I don't know if you noticed, but he has a, a terrific stroke. The attack of the nook. He has really a terrible. He comes from this very strong sound of the Hungarian school, uh, which is also shared with other with other countries. Uh, but in his case, he's really terrific. So terrific in the both the upstroke and downstroke, especially in the sforzato, that when we were recording, you know, I had the cameras and some of the cameras they were shooting very close to his bow and and the instruments while he was teaching. And I could notice that he was losing some hair mm -hmm. every time that he did his song strong on the uh, on the uh, on the strings, and this so every now and then I can notice him grabbing the, the you know the pending the pending string and, and uh, scratching them out uh, from the bow and keeping on teaching of course. So after the recording, I went to the to 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 Georgia. I said you know to have a word in the end of the recording. How did it go? This and that, and and I said maestro. I was noticing that uh, you were losing hair with your <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> bow stroke. Well, let's hope. I was telling it as a as a as a little joke, you know, like well, let's hope uh, it, you will have enough to complete the recording of the of the masterclass. <laughs> and he told me, Ah, yeah, yeah, I'm aware. Look, and he showed me this case, and he took another bow. I have this one ready to be used, <laughs> just prepared from the Lute. He had another one because he he knew well that uh, that this would uh, would happen. So he uses to to um, he 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 goes around with his case with two bows, mm -hmm. not because he is afraid that one breaks, but but because he knows that 
at least one, one of them will lose the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it will go broader and he has to change it. Mm -hmm. And this tells you, and this is another interesting motivation to watch this masterclass. I mean, if a normal violinist go to a normal teacher, as good as they are, because they are all good in general, we are not. Uh, uh, and he 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 strokes like and he strikes like this the ball on the string. The teacher will say. Listen, you have to go to go a little smoother, otherwise you will lose the, this hair. So, I mean, out of a defect, Georgie made a weapon out of it in his case and regarding his own technique. It's something that is very interesting for a violinist to watch at least once, to have a, to be aware that you can even play like this and, of course, be a, a, a great performer. To me, that's a very important point, Gender Cardi, you made. Uh, with the iClassical Academy uh, presenting such a gallery of different mm. teaching methods and different teaching schools, yeah. I think it, uh, it's an incredible source of opening up the horizons for both students and professionals, I mean, for all of music lovers as well. Yes. Um, because if you are only in your... Um, small or large one country music school within one scope of, of a set aesthetics of it m m oftentimes that aesthetics may be uh, discouraging musicians from doing certain things in their instruments and uh -huh. the discouragement comes together with oh, okay as a student if you're doing it this way or that way you're not going to have a career because it's just not accepted in at all, but it's not accepted in that particular school. In another school, it may be an expressive tool, which is a welcome uh, aesthetic I element. I and know. so I think by opening up the horizons for musicians, you're basically telling that anything and everything works if it is in harmony with what you're trying to express. Absolutely. And to me, that's an extraordinary liberating message. And you're doing it in the practical terms. I can just go and watch videos from different violinists from different schools and see that, which is something which they do, may not be, may be a no-no in one school, and it's a yes-yes in another school. And yeah, how exactly. to incorporate it appropriately into my own personal musical expression. Exactly. I yes. think this is, this, is a, this is an extraordinary message and uh, ability for musicians to uh, explore. And we'll move on to the next video by uh, a phenomenal violinist. He's one of my favorite. I have to say, I have a soft spot for Leonidas Kavakis. So he created a, um, a, a course for iClassical Academy. Let's sample it a little bit. Yes, yes, I hear even more, even more so that now the color is coming through. Because that's why I ask you to play the... Because here you have only one note. Yeah? So there's a... To succeed, um, the most important thing is to be uh, very much um, in respect of the art of music and the traditions that are there. The actual center of the power of all this, what we're doing, lies within the music of the music, the, the, the art of music and the great message that the music carries when it is on stage or whether it is on recordings. To achieve, in order to achieve the singing of this... this uh... So it's, it's, you are almost there, huh? you're almost well, there. Um, modern technology, I think, is um, contributing a lot today to um, 
the classical music and the the way it can reach uh, people who cannot uh, be at the place when it happens, where it happens. It's an acoustical experience. It's an experience that that um, uh, it's a communication that happens through sound, through hearing. It's about one or two bars where there is this group that. Yeah. Um, a little more analysis, I'm sorry, I hate this. Yeah, what happens now is that I hear, I hear that you stress very much the downbeat. The Driving force should be, as I always say, um, music itself and uh, the, its super human power. You stress da 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 It's actually the opposite, I think. And then we get. I hear a little, a little of this. This. I think it's actually the opposite. No compromise in the end. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, uh, can we? The extraordinary human power of music. This is just so true. Liani, this is just such a phenomenal communicator. Not only in, in, through the music itself, but through words too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, um, that's also why we are extremely grateful that we, we have now also his master classes that we can share on iClassical Academy. You know, it's one thing is to start an academy, and the second thing is how you bring it out in the world. So we, from the beginning, we thought that if you want to bring it out in the world, you have to search for synergies with other important uh, whether it's an important other um, online academy, well, it was difficult for us to find, but we found uh, good partnerships with Medici TV, we found a good partnership with Naxos vi Video Library, and Naxos had the opportunity to acquire the masterclasses of DuckApp. DuckApp is uh, another very uh, good professional uh, masterclass uh, content creator, and when Naxos acquired their catalog, they also offered it to us as, as their partner. And uh, we were very happy about it because we have not only uh, Leonid Leonidas Kavakos, but we have Misha Maisky and there's Jean-Bernard Pommier and there is uh, Sir Andras Schief. There is Natalia Lomaiko. There are many, many other people that for us gives another rich um, value to to the large content that we have already but you know we, we want to keep on going and adding more new material so we're very happy that we uh, were able to to share this now also with our um, musical users yes this is such a rich content and um, presenting it in in a form of an educational institution I mean uh, this is, may not be an appropriate word to call your company as an institution, but you do have a curriculum. You really walk people through 360 degrees of what they may need, where they need to look for the information and the sources which can really help them build their mastery of the art, their communicative skills, their connection with what they're doing, and how to direct their their, their professional development and careers themselves and um, one of the critical aspects of online music and activity is of course today uh, the performing uh, live concerts through internet and then virtual platforms and um, that's uh, how um, iClassical Academy and virtual concert halls met and um, that's where we found of uh, the virtual hall counter halls found a fantastic partner in collaborating with the iClassical Academy because virtual counter halls um, 
is established a platform for professional musicians to be able to use as as stage as a virtual stage it's um of vchs is a new model broadcasting company which supports live music performances and programs with a cutting edge broadcasting technology and television production systems it's a company which was created by musicians and for musicians with the understanding of what musicians need in order to perform. And uh, it was also built in close collaboration with professionals from the technological companies and the television industry um, that enabled virtual concert halls to merge the best from all those industries together uh, and to create something which can serve musicians as a live performing online stage. Um, we'll just um, show a little video which demonstrates the beginnings of the virtual concert halls and then um, we'll um, move to more comments about performing online. So now that we've introduced the virtual stage, uh, which is being provided for the Sound and Spreciva competition, um, let's explore what it entails for musicians, music educators, and managers, too, for everyone involved in the music industry to start using the virtual stage. Well, let me first start it. I, I find it fantastic that you started this virtual concert halls. Um, it's so important, especially now in these times, and um, it's very important that we have one stage where all the classical uh, musicians, they can gather together and we, we show different kind of artists, different kind of levels also, different kind of possibilities to the audience. It's, it's very important to have it right now, first, because it encourages musicians to, to go on, because you give a possibility that you can still perform and you perform online. Uh, second, it really brings comfort to people because we all know that uh, in, in difficult times um, music brings us so much relief, brings us so much, uh, how should I say, so much comfort, especially on the emotional uh, level and um, that's why we, we have to continue and what I also think is very important is that we should not let ourselves be discouraged from what is happening right now. And we should try to use the occasion to, to transform it and make something strong out of it that will not serve us all now, but it will serve us also for the future. It will serve us forever because we grow together. And I think that's what you provide. You really provide the chance to grow together with virtual concert halls to to grow into this performing online which should be for every musician if you ask me it should be uh, completely integrated in their career so not only live performance also online performance it's 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 it can be really fun and it's also a lot of fun and it gives a lot of important value to to audiences worldwide. Absolutely. As a performer, I agree completely. It's fun. It was very scary at first when I just myself started as a pianist performing online. It was weird. It was strange and like all new things are uh, frightening. But um, I've grown really to enjoy it a lot and I feel like it provides me with uh, new forms of connection with the audience and many other 
benefits of being able to reach across the countries and being able to um, play exactly what and when I want, exactly on the instrument, which I love, and not have to pay and, uh, for expensive airline tickets and not have to uh, fly across the ocean, which I absolutely dread, 14-hour flights, and um, not have to change my time zone and lots and lots of things which are very special about performing online. Not to say that there, I don't, uh, I don't look back and I don't want to go back and play uh, in the concert hall, in the physical concert hall. Of course I do. But this, uh, as it unfolds, performing on the virtual stage uh, shows its attractive sides to me as a performer more and more. So, um, but we have some hard questions from many people who are rightfully questioning the um, sustainability of the virtual platforms and it, its necessity and uh, whether or not um, they would want to be involved with doing that. F for example, as um, educators, the online educators with many years of experience, uh, I want to ask you this. Uh, a lot of times teachers don't believe that the uh, virtual education can be comparable to uh, the education hap which is happening in the person in private lessons or in classroom for uh, you know the groups of students and uh, they believe that the, the essential element of uh, doing it in, t in in real time and in person is lost in the online education what's your take on that that's a good question. Well, um, I will mention first uh, a couple of statistics. You know, we we live we live on numbers. We we take also big part of our experience from the numbers, the statistics, how a certain course or certain page is watched, uh, how how long, uh, and these kind of things. Well, statistics say that five years ago, let's say seven years ago every teacher in the world would say online teaching out of question not possible the only teaching that can be done is inside the rooms of a conservatory that's it that's teaching music all the rest is is, is not teaching music uh, three years ago uh, some they started to say well, maybe, maybe it's not exactly like that. Maybe because they were experiencing uh, their students, their own students, coming from new, from new, with new ideas that way that they that they grabbed from YouTube. Okay, so they started thinking. Okay, I I don't agree, but we have to deal with that possibly because we have to do something about that. Now the situation is a part of a teacher, a part of teachers, they still say, I don't want to even to know to, to hear about uh, online education because it's not possible. Another part, consistent part, can say, I'm not an online teacher, but I understand that it's a, a part of the new of the new normal. So I'm trying to see how I can so how I can deal with that. And many of them they suggest themselves to their students to go online and to grab new ideas and to take some ideas and be ready and, and, and they are ready to to confront them and to see what actually is best for their students. Then there is a third part completely new uh, who they are still conservatory teachers but they strongly believe in, on, in online education as a different weapon to implement to improve and uh, to replace live teaching only in the case in, 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 in which uh, a student cannot afford or he lives too far from academies and from teachers. So uh, that online remains the only chance that he has to, uh, to learn music. But anyway, um, you know, even if, even if a student has teachers that that uh, that he can physically attend uh, it remains a very a very good a very good tool a, a very important tool and weapon to enlarge their vision exactly what we what we said today so it's not a matter of one thing replacing the other or vice versa it's just a matter of being able to to learn from both these these worlds uh, 
uh, and matching what they can offer and enlarge the, the knowledge. That's all in the end. What strikes me <clears throat> in your answer, Jen Ricardo, is absolutely true. Students are a driving force in the change because they're in the next generation. generation yes. And um, they go on YouTube and they come back to their teachers with new ideas. Yeah. I'm a performer and I'm a teacher and many other things. <clears throat> and I maintain my own very um, advanced private studio. And as a teacher, I would prefer my students went to iClassical Academy and came back to me with ideas which they draw from Leonidas Kavakas exactly. rather than a random video which they just stumble upon in, yeah, a, in the ocean of videos uh, which are available through different platforms because I know th they will bring a valuable additional ideas and additional in energy. They'll add energy to uh, the learning process to the, through that. So yeah. I think it... yes, no, no. That's 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 the matter. Of course, YouTube. <laughs> well, there are some that some they say YouTube is full of rubbish. It's not exactly like that. It's, it's not but exactly it's, like that. But it's so difficult to navigate. It's yes, it's difficult to navigate it. There are a lot of things you really don't know what is valuable and uh, and what is not. Exactly. Uh, we knew from the start, and that's the particular ability that Irma and the founders of iClassical Academy had right away from the start to know that not only it has to be done and that at the top of the quality of teaching, but also the top of the quality of recording. And, and you can notice every recording that we do is strictly dedicated to an online utilization. So all the instruments and all the teaching is dedicated to the camera. It's close enough to be watched on a, on a phone, which has anyway as a small display and so it's it's really done on the purpose it's not a normal master class just filmed with a large shot and then put online as you can find on youtube you find a lot of them and uh, it's true they are for free but uh, maybe they have some some useful tips inside but of course that's not that's not the oh no absolutely you, the videos from iClassical Academy they are designed specifically for online learning and they're designed specifically to um, enhance what a camera can do and what the students may not even be able to do in the physical master class because if you're 50 rows away from a violinist showing some very sensitive and very detailed technique you can much better see it with a camera like one of the videos um you introduced here was uh done with a uh, with the aid of what 15 cameras from different angles. Um, just imagine the student going around the piano and trying to see uh, <laughs> a finger action from 15 different angles. That's just not possible without online yeah, learning. Course. And yeah, those yeah. are the things which are spe specific f to online learning and opportunities which it provides. Exactly. And here we come to the to the a couple of features that online learning has and the physical learning does not have, which is first, the different angles and second the chance to rewatch the same lesson because we all know that any student us included you know if you were students or when you follow a lesson you will not remember more than the 30 or 40 percent uh, of it if you are good uh, so so of course you you would need that to watch the same lesson again but in the case of people less which you can do with this kind of videos. You can watch them and rewatch part of them. And for example, in the case of Georgie Pauk, I strongly would suggest to watch the lesson and rewatch his playing to understand this particular bow stroke, which is must of, which is one of his strongest weapons. You know, in this uh, in very this unique, absolutely amazing, amazing things. Yeah. So um, we can see, and I hope through watching this program our viewers can also see that online learning and physical in-person learning don't have to be in conflict no. uh, it can be put to work and complement each other and help each other absolutely, absolutely. that can be done in a classical academy and you Irma, you uh jen ricardo are doing it and you're doing it successfully uh we better listen to your expertise and your advice
Now, can I uh, can I yeah. just add something? Sorry, can I just add please, something? Please, please. Um, I think what is also important is to realize that we we are dealing with a different kind of generation, the millennials and everything that comes before, Generation Z and everything. They are all used. Young people are very much used to do different things at the same time. Uh, they are much quicker. They're used to watch quick videos, they're used to, to do, to be on their smartphone, to have maybe a computer open. They do a lot of things together. I think for them to enter conservatories, and some of them are still very traditional, is really like, like a complete different world. And if you, as a conservatory or, you know, online teaching, if you are not catching up with this, you lose them. Because they will start, as you say, they will start to search for it themselves on YouTube or whatever. So better, you go with them, you go with the flow, you guide them, you show them and offer them a large, uh, a large catalog, a large possibility of different courses and masterclasses. Then that you, you know, you stick to what you believe is still good. We should, I think, we really have to listen to to young people and to what they need because they are as you said in the beginning it's the future generation and um we we should listen to them and at the same time we should also listen to the older generations because the the older ones uh, that maybe still have trouble catching up with all of this we should be also patient with them and help them to overcome this this these problems as they see it as problems sometimes and also guide them to understand that it can also be fun for them. Absolutely. And um, with the younger generation, uh, you're so right. The, um, there's a lot of, um, of course, uh, you know, discontent musicians um, complain that the younger generation students and musicians disregard the tradition. A lot of times they don't disregard the tradition, they just don't know it as much because they draw their education from YouTube and Google search. And if we um, demand of them to learn the tradition in some old fashioned way, which they don't embrace and they've moved uh. on light years away from it, um, we're putting like a straight jacket on them. This will not contain their interest in a tradition. It's It, it will not, um, infuse their study t towards tradition. It'll only just turn them off. Yes. Um, I agree with you completely. We need to listen. This is their form of learning. They're multitaskers. They're fast searchers. They want a lot at the same time. And we better provide them with good stuff <laughs> and a lot of it then um, uh, just say, well, we're traditional musicians. We're not going to do anything in the new form. That's just absurd. Yeah. Right, right. Yes. Yes. And um, another question which often comes up among musicians, and that is about uh, even even newer form of um, performing the virtual performance, the live performance on the virtual platforms, vice versa pre-recorded. A lot of times I hear from musicians, okay, okay, we get it, videos. All right, we're going to do the videos. We will pre-record our performance. But performing live that is completely out of question. It's risky. The technology may break down. I may not sound the way I want to sound. I may not look the way I want to look. Um, it's just a no-no. Um, and this just doesn't work for performing arts. We, we, ha we hear a lot of very categorical um, rejection of that as a form of a performance. What's your take on it? I have to mention another statistics. That comes from the, <laughs> the you know, we live on statistics. So we have statistics for everything. And, that's a good uh, way to learn the history, to know yes. what, the facts of it. Statistics yes, is yes, fact yes of that's what I think. Let's first learn the facts and then we make consideration and we take conclusions. Uh, this statistics says that uh, as regards sales of records, so uh, recorded music, you know, records, LPs, in classical music, Lately, the audience prefer much more the live performance uh, respect to the studio to the studio recording. 
because in the mind of the average listener in classical music we are talking about the audience the listeners uh it has it it, it has you know it, it, it now they have the idea uh that a studio recording it is manipulated and a live performance is not now well we there's some truth to that of course is not we, exactly. we call it manipulation editing <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But if we, of course, video can be edited, of course. Uh, you know, every musician would say, okay, if I want to replace one note uh, in a phrase, can it be done? And the editor will say, yes, it can. Uh, we record it again, and then we put, and then we put it. And the audience know this. So when they hear a perfect studio recording, they say, yeah, okay, but is this the musician or is this the musician plus editing at least? Not only the editing. Yes, you still need the musician to do to do some to do some to make some music. But how how is how where uh, the musician ends and where the editor starts? You know. So in the mind of the of the of the audience, live performing it is start already started a couple of years ago to have a more important value this will reflect this will necessarily reflect on the taste of listeners to any kind of performance in general so the ones who say oh no no we pre-record otherwise it's too risky they will have to consider this they can do they can stick to recording to recording videos of course, they will have a lot of problems to participate to sound expressive competition in this yes. case. But this we talk. But they talk, they talk about this later. Yeah. You know, yes. But you know, they can decide to stick. But they will match a different judgment from the from the from the listener. This is something they cannot they cannot skip. I, I agree with that. And um, as a musician myself, a performing artist, um, being on the other side of the fence of this. I also find an incredible energy and value in the momentary performance, yeah. however imperfect it may be. If uh, I set aside the harsh judgment based on mechanics of my performance and I focus on the judgment based on the message which I'm able to deliver, from my own personal experience and hundreds and hundreds of live performances in physical concert halls, of course, and uh, extensive career as a performing artist, I can tell for sure yeah. I perform with more energy and more captivating interpretations come out of my performance in the real time, even though maybe less perfect. Yes, it's very difficult to be both uh, like Rachmaninoff was. Rachmaninoff only recorded everything once. Mm. Yeah. Even his but you, but... You're, you're talking about uh, being perfect, um, Anna, and I think that's that's another thing. I don't know exactly how to describe it in English, but the the need to be perfect in the classical music world is enormous. It's it's incredible. I think that a lot of teachers, from when they start to teach uh, a student, it's always about you have to play it right, you have to follow the composer will, you have to do this, you have to do that. I understand, of course, there are certain parameters that you have to follow. But this, this, this always keeping on um, demanding on being perfect is so heavy on musicians. I, I saw this many, many times. And I think the most critical ones um what what people fear and i think this is it's really a fear why they don't want to do a live performance is coming because of this and then the 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 biggest fear i think is the critic that they get from their peers because the biggest critical people are the peers who can hear exactly where they missed maybe a note or where they may be interpreted in the in the wrong way if you look at the audience half of the audience they are not sitting in the hall to see if you maybe make a mistake in your performance. That's no. that's not that's not why they are there, and so um, I think this sort of tension that that has been in the musical world and it's still there. 
I would I would encourage people to 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 just let it let it go. I mean, everybody makes mistake, and and when you are in certain professions, people allow you to make mistakes, and when you are a musician, you're not allowed to make a mistake. I mean. That's one thing. And the other thing which is really important is that the whole online uh, the whole online world is very much in favor of authenticity. And you can see also the, the, the influences or maybe not the influences, but the people that are are popular. And let me take uh, for example, Ray Chen. He's very popular and very active online. But he's also very authentic. He's just, you know, how he is. There's not, uh, he can do strange things, funny things. Uh, he sees little kids. Uh, I mean, he's very authentic. And I think that's another, another feature that one should remember that if you go perform online first, it's really not a problem to make a mistake. That's, that's mm -hmm. really not a problem. And second is you, you just have to be authentic. You have to be yourself. You, you play for an audience and, and they appreciate, they feel it also online. Oh, yeah, but I'm absolutely. Afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I wanted to say sometimes we, uh, we also should try to define, well, we could make, a, you know, a three hours long episode of these live shows uh, only on this concept, the concept of perfection. Uh, we should also try to define what perfection is. And if we would try, we would probably discover that it's kind of not possible. In the end, what is perfection? If by perfection we, we, we mean not to make mistakes, well, okay, that's obvious. No one is pleased to make a mistake while he performing, he's performing a piece. If it happens, it happens. But we don't, we don't look for that. <laughs> we don't search for that. That's for sure. But when we are talking about the performance and uh, you know irma uh, a little uh, some times ago he he told me a phrase that i that i still have as a as a sort of rule he says he said when an artist says i'm a perfectionist half of the times it means i'm very uncertain about what i'm doing mm -hmm. i mean uh, 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 once that we achieve enough skill, enough technique, enough not to make mistakes, then what is perfect and what is not? It's really difficult. And we come back to what Irmas was saying. It comes from the judgment of your entourage, of your uh, colleagues, of your friends, maybe two or three of them. Then there is a whole world who would appreciate you, but you don't know. You know. So, uh, so this, 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 this fear. And then there is the third thing. Uh, you don't want to perform live? Hmm. OK, but if you give a concert, I'm afraid you will have to. So I mean, <laughs> what, what makes it so different from, <laughs> you know, either you send them a DVD or uh, instead of going on <laughs> the page, or, or you will have to do it. So it's a, a sort of, you know, it's sort of a natural passage of a, of a career of a musician, whatever mm. it is sooner or later you have to try that so. yeah and i think we are, as musicians need to kind of remember why we are here in the first place because we wanted to perform yeah. uh i haven't heard from professional musicians saying well i went into this profession because i wanted to record yes I haven't heard that. We all wanted to perform, and let's not forget that. And yes. um, I want to add to this, the hardest and harshest judge actually is not our colleagues. I think it's a devil living in our own minds and yes. telling yes. <laughs> Because a lot of times I find I myself a lot more generous with my colleagues, and so are they. And it's that harshest critic, which is not very helpful. It's just a disabling... Um, manipulative voice of uh, meeting some standard which, like you said, Jan Ricardo, is a very elusive standard. And, it's a uh, very, yes, yes, yes. And we had an experience of that with Pavel Berman when we recorded, we recorded the 24 Caprices. As you know, he recorded the, the 24 performance and then he recorded the 24 lessons. And mm -hmm. this is what uh, the, the the course about Paganini consists of. Well, we did the first 12 
1 to 12 in a first session of recording then we edited we follow uh, his instructions we had another very good uh, violin teacher following the editing we built up the whole organization to edit them exactly as he wanted then he finally listened listened to it and he told me they are perfect and in fact i will play it again yeah. <laughs> And as a matter of fact, we went to the studio again because he said, yes, they are perfect, but they are not interesting. So let me do it again. OK, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? We were not exactly happy um, also in terms of budget to do it again. But, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, we did it. And actually, it was more interesting. He went faster. He recorded them faster than the previous time. Mm -hmm. uh, also because uh, he collected experience about, about not that he needs because he recorded a lot of records and he made so many performances that but anyway we were more acquainted each other we were more uh, into into the piece it took it took less time and they were actually much more interesting than before the second <laughs> time so actually we didn't record 24 caprices we recorded 36 but we published <laughs> only 24. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a very interesting story. Um, yeah. So uh, with the um, live performing online and um, that being probably the only limiting condition of the Sound Espressivo competition. Sound Espressivo competition offers musicians to choose their own repertoire, their own categories, their own timing, their own dates, their own place of performance, everything. There's only one thing which we don't give people any choice. They can't send us recordings. They can't send us CVs in place of their performances. They should actually have to step on the modern, living, current virtual stage and perform live. That's the only restrictive demand which... It's not restrictive. I tend to say it's not restrictive. It's a sort of safety, of a more um, a, a rule of safety for the participants themselves. Because if I can send a recorded video, I will send a recorded video, but someone else will send a recorded video. And maybe his video is better edited than mine. Yeah, so... that's a matter of money only. The quality <laughs> of editing is a matter of money. Exactly. But the quality of a performance is within it's the hands matter... of the musician. Yes. So to tell to all the participants, I really, I really dare to say it's it's something that sound expressivo guarantees to you instead of restricting if you're good you're good if yes. you're not uh, you will be better next time you have to try it i mean you have to start <laughs> exactly. somewhere as they say <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, uh, virtual concert halls which provides all the technology and the backbone to, yeah. to the contestants has developed a very reliable system which will guarantee that you will sound the best you can currently on the virtual stage. The technology and the systems are developing and we are currently developing with them. But we guarantee that this is the best out there. You can step on the stage with trust because our sound and video engineers will make sure you sound yes. very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear a sample of one of the auditions uh, of a contestants who auditioned with Sound is Perceived just a few days ago. No matter where you are or who you are, music connects us all. We started with a dream, but now we are paving the future. Welcome to the Sound Espressiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection, community, an extraordinary array of judges. Get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage.
So this was the audition of Daniel Wong, one of the contestants who came online. Um, he had a, a sound check and video check with uh, one of our producers, and then um, uh, he had a moment to just watch a little intro and then um, was able to audition. The recording was done in real time, live, and that was the real sound of this uh, contestant. Beautiful, beautiful. play, don't you think? Yes, beautiful. <laughs> very, very good sound. By the way, you, you mm. noticed I changed the headset because I wanted to hear better what was actually coming coming through the the, the whole range beautiful. of sound that I couldn't hear. I could hear also the pedals. You know, the low, the 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 left hand with the low notes uh, when he played short or, he played, or piano or a piano or pianissimo sometimes. It all came through uh, very good. This very is beautiful. so. So I use the occasion also to reassure the listener and the potential uh, participants that uh, could be afraid that not all of the sound could be captured and uh, properly rendered. Actually, it's not. It all comes through. So congratulations for the for the work that you did on the technical part uh, to to guarantee the audio quality. Oh yeah, absolutely. The the producers of virtual concert halls had done by now over seventy programs with yeah. almost four hundred musicians performing on this platform, and of course every instrument, every different musician style and range of dynamics brings its own challenges. And by working with that many musicians, we have developed very reliable and comprehensive system to help musicians with their setup so that their range of dynamics, their styles, their colors actually can be delivered through the uh, immediate transmission of the online um, uh, online virtual performance. Yeah. And uh, we, we are very happy to say uh, not only our technical systems, but the people who operate those technical systems are professional musicians those yeah. are people who know exactly what you as a musician want right. because yeah. they are professional performing musicians too and they give you their love their support and they were able to tweak the systems to actually support the classical music like no other so beautiful great yes and thank you very much for this wonderful meeting again and i have to say again i only asked you half of the questions i prepared today <laughs> you will have to give me again online on air, on air <laughs> promise, back. promise to come back <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> because the, you, you both are just such a source of warmth and love and welcoming and extraordinary experience of actually how to make those things work not that they exist and how they exist but how musicians can make sense out of what's happening today and make it work for them instead of them being victims of uh, challenges which they face. And um, with this, I would like uh, to ask you again to wrap up our conversation with uh, addressing our viewers, the teachers and the musicians um, in a short message. And after that, we'll say goodbyes to our viewers. Um, Janu Garda, would you like to go first this time? Yes, okay. I have, um, by the way, I, well, of course, uh, what can we say? It's really a, a, a fantastic operation, what, uh, what, uh, what you are doing. Uh, you are giving really the opportunity to a lot of people uh, to make themselves visible, to confront themselves with the rest of the, with the, rest of the community of participants. And uh, uh, for the listeners, once again, I will say, uh, it's really something that every music lover should watch uh, this kind of competition because you can see uh, participants, players play. You can even see judges judge. It's completely transparent and uh, and it, it gets very, very tensive when it goes to the, you know, to the final rounds. It gets pretty tense, also pretty intriguing. And if you watch such a thing, you will certainly be involved and for the players once again consider and consider it if you're uncertain uh, uh, give give you know just watch something more about this make uh, take some more information 
is not something that has to be discharged too quickly. It has to be it has to be tried, um, and and uh, and uh, if you try that, sure, certainly you will be happy with it. Thank you very much, Irma. Would you please give us a closing message to everyone? We're, we're, we're only praised, I think we're only praised to have the internet connection today in our world that connects us all, that connects all musicians and artists and managers and teachers and students and people that just start their career or maybe people that are hesitating, should I ever start um, learning an instrument or, or take career in this I think we're only praised that we have these opportunities and we're also praised that we have people like Anna and her team that set yeah. up this wonderful stage uh, and I think you should use it whenever you're watching now our show I only want to encourage you to use the occasion because it's there and you should take it grab your chances and uh, if it's not for this time that you get through, you'll get through next time. You watch other people and I think it will be a wonderful experience. I have no doubt. I'm very much looking forward to the rest of all your participants and contestants. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you for the whole uh, show and, and the wonderful <laughs> presentation. I think you're a wonderful host. If I would <laughs> work and at CNN, are. I would right away engage you. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Thank you. And thank you both so much thank for you. your generous sharing, for being such a devoted supporters of musicians, for your understanding and for the energy you add to this project. We are very grateful and thank you, our visitors, our uh, viewers and um, the contestants, the teachers, everyone who participates in this initiative. And we'll see you again in our next podcast. Bye.